In this video, we'll consider the column space of the product AB. We'll again call that matrix C. In another video, we considered the null space of C, and we discovered that it's related to the null space of B. More precisely, it's always the same or larger. In other words, the null space of B is a subspace of the null space of C. In this video, we'll try to relate the column space of C to either the column space of A or B. And if you look at this example, and I'll tell you in a moment why the matrix B is blank, you quickly realize that it has to be related to the column space of A, because the columns of C live in the same space as the columns of A, in this case R3. The columns of B can live in an entirely different space. In this case, that space is R4. So it has to be related to the column space of A. Now, is it larger or smaller? Well, this is not a very complicated question, and I could simply rattle off the answer and give you the simple reason for it. But it's much more interesting and much more insightful to approach this question indirectly by answering a simple question. What I would like for you to do here is to come up with a matrix B that would make this identity correct. Can you do it? Well, how are we going to do it? We're going to once again take the column-wise perspective on matrix multiplication and answer this question column by column. So in order to come up with the first column of the matrix B, we need to come up with four coefficients so that the linear combination of the columns of A with those coefficients results in the first column of B, excuse me, of C. So what we're looking at is a simple decomposition problem, and we've done many decomposition problems like this in the past. In fact, we're looking at three separate decomposition problems, one for the first column of C, one for the second column of C, and one for the last column of C. So let's do them one by one. We notice that the first column of C is actually the same as the first column of A. That means that the linear combination we're looking for is 1, 0, 0, 0. And that's the four numbers that make up the first column of the matrix B. Well, we immediately have to ask, is this column unique? Or could there be another set of four numbers that would produce this column? Well, we're perfectly familiar with decomposition problems. And we know that because these columns are linearly dependent, and they're linearly dependent simply because there are four of them in a three-dimensional space, there is necessarily a non-trivial null space associated with the columns of A, and therefore this solution is definitely not unique. There are infinitely many columns that could have gone here. So this problem is somewhat flawed to begin with. But nevertheless, we were able to come up with the first column of the matrix B. Let's try to come up with the second column of the matrix B, and we'll once again know that if we're able to do it, it will simply be one of infinitely many possibilities. So can you come up with one of those columns? And you realize that the second column of the matrix B is the sum of the first two columns of the matrix A. So the linear combination we're looking for is 1, 1, 0, 0, and here's where those numbers go, into the second column of the matrix B. Excuse me, this is a 1. Okay, we're now on to the last column of the matrix C. Here it is. And that's when we realize that this last decomposition problem is not possible. It is not possible because this column is not in the column space of the matrix A. All columns in the matrix A are characterized by the property that the last entry is the sum of the first two. So that's a property of the column space of the matrix A. That's a linear property. And this column does not satisfy this property because eight is not the sum of two and five. So this is not possible. But we've also realized that if C is the product of A and B, then all of the columns of C must be in the column space of A for the simple reason that by the very definition of matrix multiplication, the columns of C are linear combinations 
of the columns of the matrix A. So by the very definition, they belong to the column space of A. So this is a very simple question with a very straightforward answer. It's just that we approached it in a more interesting way. So coming to this conclusion, the relationship is similar except the sign points in the opposite direction because it is now the column space of C that's a subspace of the column space of A. Can it be smaller? Yes, of course it can be smaller. Uh, to give you an extreme example, if you take the matrix B to be the zero matrix, then C is also the zero matrix, and the column space of C is the trivial space consisting of the zero column alone. So in that case, this would be a proper subspace. Can it be the same? Yes, it can be the same. You just have to take enough linearly independent combinations of the linearly independent columns of A to fill the entire column space. And if there aren't enough linearly independent linear combinations of the columns of A, then the column space of C will not fill the entire column space of A and will be smaller. So there you go, we answered the question. The column space of C is related to the column space of A and it's always the same or smaller. So this was a simple question after all, and we used this as an opportunity to spend a little bit more time talking about matrix multiplication.